Hi, I'm Gracie, and today I'm going to be continuing my series about hand sewing 18th century stays. The first video is will be linked in the description box, but if you want more information on the first part of this, you should definitely check that out. In this video, I'll be stitching the eyelets, um, stitching the panels together, adding linen reinforcements to the interior of the stays, adding decorative tape to the exterior of the stays, and binding the stays. The linen reinforcements that I mentioned are based on extant examples in this book, Patterns of Fashion 5, published by the School of Historical Dress. And suffice to say, suffice to say this book is a stay-making bible. It has so much great information, and I'll put the information about it in the description box down below. Um, with, with that said, let's get to stitching! With each panel stitched and all of the seam allowances whip stitched down, it was time to stitch eyelets in the back panels. 18th century stays were historically spiral laced, meaning that a single lacing cord was used, and viewed from the outside, the cord looks like parallel diagonal lines. To achieve this look, I marked and stitched eyelets that were slightly, slightly offset from each other. Each eyelet was first punched with an awl, separating the fibers without tearing them, and then was stitched with a double linen thread until the hole in the fabric was surrounded densely by stitches. To be honest, I'm not the best at stitching eyelets, and my eyelets rarely look nice from the back, but they're quite passable from the outside of the garment. My next step was stitching the panels together. This was done with a whip stitch. The edges of the panels were lined up or butted together, and I used a doubled thread to ensure that they were stitched together securely. The stays were completely constructed, but there was still a lot to do before they were complete. My next step was to add linen reinforcements to the front, waistline, and top of the stays, as is seen in extant examples in Patterns of Fashion 5. To do this, I traced and cut the shape of the top of the stays and the waistline, as well as several almond-shaped pieces for the stomach of the stays, from coarse linen, and treated the linen with gum tragacanth. Gum tragacanth is made by mixing water with the dried sap of a type of Middle Eastern legume, and its powdered form is readily available online. It is commonly used today in leatherworking, but in the 18th century, linen was often treated with gum tragacanth to make buckram, a stiffened linen useful for making bodices, inner linings, stays, and hat bases. Once the gum tragacanth had dried and my linen reinforcement pieces were stiffened, it was time to stitch them into the stays. The almond-shaped stomach reinforcement pieces were whip-stitched roughly to the lower center front of the stays, each layer attached separately. I then shaped and pinned the reinforcements around the top and waistline of the stays. These pieces were attached using a combination of rough whip-stitches and spaced back-stitches. Next, I decided to add narrow bleached linen tape to the outside of the stays. This is the most tedious part of stay making, in my opinion, and I really didn't want to do it, but the stays look much nicer with tape for added contrast. 
The angle of the tape can be used to create the illusion of an even more conically shaped torso, and the tape gives the stays more visual interest. I attach the tape to the center front, diagonally across the front panel on either side of the center tape, and to the side seams, choosing my placement based on extant examples. The tape was attached with small stitches, picking up a few threads at each side of the tape and securing it to the stays. With the tape attached to the outside of the stays, I was able to cut off the excess fabric around the top and bottom of the stays, and to cut slits for the tabs. Then it was time to bind. Binding stays is almost universally disliked, but honestly, it's not that bad. If your binding material is easy to work with, binding will be a breeze. I chose bleached linen tape, about three quarters of an inch wide, which isn't the easiest material to work with, but it's less bruising than strips of leather. Folding under the end of the tape, I whip stitched the edge of the tape to the front of the stays, about a quarter of an inch below the top. Then I went back and folded the tape over the top of the stays securing it to the back with whip stitches. The same process was used on the tabs, but binding tabs is generally a pain. Honestly, the key to binding tabs is patience and practice, but I got it done. useful if you try to make stays and you might have noticed that I haven't lined these stays yet but maybe we'll make a stays part two electric boogaloo epilogue in which I line these stays <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I think that might be interesting it would be a short video but let me know in the comments if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer or I'd, if, I'd also be happy to clarify if something just wasn't clear but all in all I'm really happy with how these stays fit I'm super happy with how the linen um, interlining and reinforcements that I added worked out because I think that really helps the front the shape of the front of the stays it helps keep them nice and smooth which I like and it's always cool to find stuff out like that because that's what that's something that historical stay makers did and now we know kind of why they did it if it helps make the front of the stays nice and smooth um, let me again yeah let me know if you have any questions and or if you have any video suggestions for what my next video should be about I'd love to hear it Thank you to you for watching, thank you to Ollie for filming and editing this video, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye!